Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Brent Cook. I'm the product manager for Summon. Um, I'm here to go over the quarterly update and Q&A, and Amy will cover the 316 and TOTA side of things. Today for the Summon update, I'll talk a little bit about what we did in 2019. Seems like so long ago, but there's some great functionality that came out of that year. Um, we'll review 2020, uh, what's on the roadmap, what we've done, and what's to come. Uh, I'll touch on some of the things that we got as part of the launch of CDI. I'll review what's in the preview environment right now for the May release and talk about some of the targets for upcoming releases. And then finally, I'll touch on some best practices and support materials for working remotely. Um, we did a, a specific Q&A session uh, based around COVID-19 and working remotely, um, and I wanted to make sure I shared that information here as well. So let's dive in with 2019. It was a busy year. We had our four quarter of the releases. We hit each release on time. A lot of great things came last year, such as Citation Trail, uh, adding Oxford University Press for uh, topic sources, um, a variety of things. I'm going to focus in on a few features that I thought I think are important to remind you of. Unpaywall, for example, that came out in the last quarter of 2019. Um, that adds direct links to PDFs uh, from Unpaywall anywhere that, where there's a DOI match. Um, and those links should take you either specifically to the PDF or to a landing page that has the PDF on it. Um, it means you can access the full text without additional login information. Um, you can change the um, name on the link. It does say PDF right now is the label. Uh, you can change that to whatever you'd like under the translations tab. Um, currently, the facets don't recognize Unpaywall. So, for example, um, Unpaywall is uh, open access, but if you click on open access, um, it, it will not, sh uh, result will not show up in that faceted search uh, purely because of Unpaywall. It has to be marked as open access as well. Um, we'll work in future releases on syncing that up so that the uh, facets uh, do function the way we'd like. But for now, this is a great way to add access to um, open access content in your search results. We also did a lot of work around video improvements. Um, we added a lot more thumbnail images for video content to the index. Uh, we also did some work with the um, icon itself. We had a little play triangle um, icon on top of the image. You can now click on that image and that will take you to a video player. It will either launch right there or take you to a page that has the video to make um, viewing and accessing that video content a little bit easier. We've also done a bit to improve import reporting last year. Um, in particular, we added open access reporting to the facet usage report. Um, as you can see here on the right hand side of the screen, um, it now appears um, in the lower right hand corner. You can see the red box around it where it says open access is true. Um, this will show the number of times someone executed a search with open access activated um, as a facet. We also added IEDL reporting or um, clicks to a specific title um, that will help you determine what content is being used and how it's being accessed from someone. Um, this report's in a slightly different place than the other reports. It's in the Summon Community folder in OBI or Oracle Business Intelligence. Um, if you haven't accessed that before, you go into the admin console, and there is a reporting tab, and you just click on that, and it will take you to the OBI platform. Um, the report's called Title Clicks, and it reports on the number of clicks per title. We've got a lot planned for 2020 as well. We're halfway through the year almost, and we've already got a lot done, and we have plenty more to go. Um, a few things to note on this roadmap. Um, as I always say, this is for informational purposes only. Um, the roadmap may change based on uh, a variety of inputs or, or um, additions. Um, in particular, I want to highlight this this year uh, because with everyone working remotely, um, we want to make sure that we take into consideration any impact to remote access. Um, and support. And so um, if any feature is highly risky or may um, change workflows significantly um, during these uh, remote working times, we want to make sure that we're, we're thoughtful about that um, and that we either time it appropriately or delay it. Um, you'll see as I show the roadmap in a moment, um, we did take some time to think about the May release and make some adjustments there. Um, inclusion of functionality will be based on capacity and the potential of uh, risk versus benefit. We'll keep you posted on that. Uh, we expect the rest of the release schedule to go as planned, um, but again, we want to be sure that we're um, thoughtful of the new environment in which we're working in. So uh, I'll talk a little bit in a moment about the February release and what we have going on with CDI. 
Um, we'll talk some about the May release um, and uh, what you'll see with link data and WhatsApp integration right now in the preview environment. Uh, again, we wanted to limit the amount of changes we've made since we knew that everyone's uh, work environment was changing as well. Um, and I should also note that uh, we're taking the same considerations for our maintenance releases. In April, we skipped the maintenance release because we didn't have anything that needed to be done that month and we just wanted to be extra cautious. Uh, we will resume our maintenance releases on the first Wednesday of months where there isn't a quarterly release in June. So June and July should have the maintenance releases. So let's talk a little bit about February and the launch of CDI. I think the biggest news there um, was we went live on February 5th without too much noise. There was a couple of little bumps here and there, but for the most part, it was a smooth launch. Everyone uh, has been uh, on CDI since then. Uh, a few things that includes is improved performance and an upgrade to Solar 7, the most stable current version of solar, um, some new facets um, and abilities to sort. I'll talk about those in a moment. Uh, some match and merge improvements. Uh, I'll get some details around that. And then the ability to search by ORCIDs. Um, and of course, the content that we have in the index continues to grow with new content providers and institutional repositories that we got with the move to CDI. Let's talk about the new facets for a moment. Um, in February, we got the author creator facet and the collection facet or database facet. You can go into uh, the settings in the admin console under facets. Um, and then either move things to the enabled uh, column if you'd like those facets to appear or move them to disabled if you don't. Um, and then you can determine the order by uh, changing that order there in the enable column. And you can also uh, change what's expanded and collapsed using that functionality there as well. You also have now the ability to sort, sort results by title or author. Those are particularly useful for smaller sets of uh, search results. Particularly if you're looking for a title um, that may be re um, repeated, say, for example, a performance of a piece of music. It's the same piece of music by title, but it's performed by different uh, orchestras. Uh, that type of sort will really help your uh, patrons find exactly what they want. And then finally, we added the recently added items facet in the March maintenance release. So you may not have taken a look at that. Um, it does show um, new records to the index. Uh, and you can do that for the past week, the past 30 days, or the past 90 days. And again, that should be only things that are new to the index. Um, if you're seeing things, so catalog refreshes um, or updates to records should not show up in that facet. If you are seeing things that appear there um, that you can expect, uh, please open a ticket and let us know the details around that. Um, there may be um, some different conditions that would make uh, a record appear new when it's not. We want to make sure that that is all working properly based on the data that we have. Next, I want to review some of the match and merge improvements we got with uh, CDI. Uh, this greatly reduced the footprint of duplicates within the index. Um, we added newsletters to the merge process. Those were no longer, those were previously not included um, as part of the merge process um, because the content type really didn't uh, need it in earlier versions. But we've seen that the amount of content around that grow, so we added that to reduce the overall footprint of the newsletters. Um, we've improved subtitle handling. There are cases where subtle variations like extra spaces or some different punctuation might prevent things from merging. Uh, since this is the subtitle um, and other uh, elements match, um, uh, we've loosened the rule there a little bit and that's helped out as well. We've increased the overmatch limit and what the overmatch limit is, it's a um, safety feature in the indexing process and the match and merge process. Um, to ensure that something doesn't get uh, too many documents merged in, into one item. Uh, so, for example, uh, there are a lot of untitled uh, poems out there, uh, and they are all different, even though they all have this title of untitled. Um, we don't want to combine those all into one record, so this was set to prevent that from happening. Um, however, with the billions and billions of records that we now have in the index, we needed to increase that limit, um, and we were able to do so and reduce the number of uh, duplicates without causing any um, or minimal inappropriate matches. We also relax language matching between the language detected and cis language fields. We standardized quotation marks. Um, there were still some points where um, different formats would prevent merging. We clean that up. And then finally, we've added to our synonyms list um, better handling of things like color versus color, for example. We also now have the ability to search by ORCID. Um, so if this ID is in the metadata, you can find it directly by searching 
ORCID colon and then the ORCID ID um, itself. Um, this does search both authors and contributors. Um, and again, this is uh, based on the metadata we have in the index. We're working to get more and more of those IDs in uh, the index. Uh, last year, just before we launched CDI, we did a big push and we increased it from 1.2 million records to 8.2 million records, adding over 7 million records in about a three month period. And so last year, the content grew um, immensely up from 200 million at the beginning of 2019. That was an add of about a quarter of a million open access records in the index. That's 61 new institutional repositories available um, as open access. We added 38 new providers overall um, to the index with a move to CDI. Um, we also increased the number of records to the, in the index to almost 4 billion. We started with less than 3.5 billion records at the beginning of 2019. So again, that was some impressive growth. And we continue to see that pattern as we move forward. Next, I want to talk a few minutes about the May release. Uh, again, we tried to limit the number of UI changes and back-end changes there that would affect uh, workflow in order to make sure that uh, your transition to working from home or working remotely was as smooth as possible. One of the things that we are releasing is linked data. Um, this is about leveraging that linked data to create better relationships within the index and on your pages um, and to expose that for use within Summon um, and in linking to external sources. Um, in particular, right now, we are focused on how to <coughs> expose additional metadata, metadata um, for search engine optimization report. Uh, or support, excuse me. Um, so by working with uh, the items on the catalog detail page, we can open summon to web crawlers via sitemap. Um, so this will be configurable on what portion of the data um, can be crawled. Um, this is going to help drive traffic to sites like Google and Bing, um, and it'll provide those crawlers with meaningful and descriptive content using uh, JSON LD, which is the linked data um, portion of, of JSON. Um, and it'll create canonical URLs for some of the resources. So um, having worked in the search engine industry for a while, I know that it's critical to have uh, URLs that don't have a lot of variables or punctuation in them because those will um, stop a crawler from seeing those pages. So having a canonical URL is important for visibility uh, to search engines. What does that mean for you? A lot of it on the, will be the back end and the data piece and the connections there, um, but it's visible on the detail page. Um, that'll be the landing page for search engines to find. Um, it'll also be the one that users will land on if they search and find it in a search engine. So we need to make sure that that page shows that there's a greater library site beyond it. It needs to invite those users uh, to look around and discover more on your site. Um, it needs to provide detailed overview of the resource itself, since that's what they're interested in, and that's what the search engines are going to pick up. And then there needs to be ways for the user to be engaged in actions, like citing it, emailing it, saving. Uh, viewing in a classic uh, catalog. So that includes <coughs> basically the main changes you'll see here on the user interface are the buttons on the right hand side there for site and email and so on. Um, we've cleaned those up and added some iconography there. Uh, made them look a little more modern. We've also included additional information on the page overall so that uh, um, you should have more metadata exposed on the page and of course more that will uh, be useful for those uh, in uh, crawlers and users. We also added WhatsApp integration. Uh, we know that with your patrons having to access your site remotely more and more these days, uh, that being able to connect with them is important. Um, uh, we already had a few different uh, um, resident um, or integrated chat clients in the Summon user interface, um, such as Question Point and Library Help. Um, and Spring Shares um, uh, help app, um, all of those um, had support. We've now added WhatsApp support um, for this. All you have to do is go into the back end um, and configure, go to the chat tab under settings. Um, you'll see a configuration there for WhatsApp. You'll enter in the phone number for the phone that you're using for WhatsApp chat support, um, and then um, work from there. You'll click on either the two chat uh, bubbles right up there, the, the dialog bubbles to launch the uh, chat, as you can see in the screen grab. There's also the ability to have a chat uh, icon show at the top of the screen or um, on the side of the screen. Um, and again, um, the chat itself will be used 
in the WhatsApp application on your smartphone. So you'll need to have that installed. Anything around the chat itself, saving of the chat um, uh, and whatnot, that's all handled on the WhatsApp side. Uh, we do pass it through though. And if you have more than one in, uh, individual within your institution that wants to support uh, this chat, you'll just need to go into the admin console and change whatever phone number you're using to direct it to the appropriate WhatsApp uh, client. Um, and when you make changes in the back end, just as a reminder, it takes about five minutes for those configurations to take, uh, take hold. Sometimes quicker, but usually within five minutes it will be done. Next, I want to talk a little bit about what we have planned for the remainder of the year with the August release in November. Um, much of what you'll see in the August and November releases comes courtesy of the new enhancement request system or NERS voting process. Um, that is managed by Eluna. Um, and uh, a lot of the functionality that we see here, you uh, hopefully saw a post that they put today on the listserv talking about it. That's a lot of great changes to the front end and it will hopefully make your lives a little bit easier and help your patrons find what they're looking for. For August, we've got a lot of really good things and I want to talk through some of the things that we have there. Again, from the NERS voting, uh, this is adding a section number to course IDs and course reserve pages. So for someone over all the customers, um, this should help with the display of multiple section numbers with each result in the course reserve page. We're also working on making a consistent experience and linking back to search results. Um, there are a variety of uh, um, uh, things that you can do to link back to searches. You can go into a, um, uh, the saved items folder, or you can go to the advanced search, for example, and getting back to the search results is different for each one of those. Um, and uh, we're looking at making that consistent so that you can easily navigate their way around. Um, we're also working on improving peer review labeling uh, as part of the uh, user interface. Right now you can uh, facet down to just peer reviewed content uh, using the facet, um, but there's no clear way when it's a mixed set of results um, that include peer review to be able to see easily which one is peer reviewed. So we'll work on um, that and labeling that more clearly. We're also looking at adding uh, the display of book and ebook editions and publication years um, uh, to be able to differentiate between editions of books and ebooks. Um, and of course, this, as well as others that rely on um, information coming from the index, it will be reliant on the metadata to quality to make this really an effective feature. Uh, but again, we believe that uh, the quality is there for this feature going forward. Um, and then finally, are reviewing uh, the Summon user interface uh, for accessibility compliance. In particular, we're focusing on the WCAG.1 accessibility guidelines. Uh, those came out last year. We wanna make sure that we are um, not just compliant, but that we are um, meeting our, uh, our patrons where we need to. We wanna make sure that our, the content is, avail is accessible as much as can be. Um, so as we review, we're in the process of doing uh, a review right now, um, and as we identify items that need to be addressed around accessibility, we will add those into the product. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the November release. But, so we've still got some time between now and then. Um, it'll... Uh, go live on the first Wednesday in November. And again, there's a lot of great things in here from the NERS voting process, um, clarifying author and editor and results and citations. Um, we'll help distinguish between them in both the preview of the results and an exportation to citations. Again, this will be reliant on the metadata being present in order for um, author and editor to be displayed, but where possible, we will make this available. Bringing the database A to Z list within Summon, you do have the A to Z link at the top that you can put um, in EJP and things like that. Uh, but we know that people still sometimes want to find that database they're looking for. So we're taking a look at how we can integrate in uh, maybe with a widget on the right hand side or, or something like the container that allows you to provide more of an A to Z list and search function within that A to Z list within the Summon search results. We're also working with best bets here to improve that. Uh, we've heard uh, from you, both from the idea exchange and from conversations with you, that many of you will use LiveAnswer live FAQs to get information, um, to store information and share it. Um, and then you find that you are copying that over to best bets to make it available there, um, which is uh, requiring double entry. So we wanna simplify that as much as we possibly can. 
Springsteer has uh, an F API uh, for LibAnswers. Um, so we'll be working with that API in order to hopefully automate this process as much as we can. We're also working on making uh, search refinements persistent. Um, currently, if you flip back and forth between basic and advanced searches, you can uh, get to a point where you need to restart that entire process. So rather than losing any sort of refinements that you've made along the way, uh, we want to make sure those stick with you as you move from basic to advanced and back. Also, this um, we'll also be look, working on the Sierra integration um, in Q4. Um, this is the initial phase. <clears throat> We're still in the early stages. Excuse me. Um, building requirements, um, looking at systems. Um, the idea is that ultimately, with integration with Sierra, um, this should allow for quicker, easier access to holding your check out, checking out content, and it should make administration easier for your staff. Um, at this point, and for there probably won't be functionality will be releasing at that time it will most likely be early adopters um, early phases of this integration but we'll keep you posted as that work progresses uh, and that also uh, feeds into another uh, item from the NERS uh, request which is analysis for a SAML federated or shibboleth login option uh, one of the features that's been on the idea exchange and I've heard about uh, for a while uh, we do support uh, things like save searches with things like Microsoft OneDrive um, and Google Drive. Uh, a lot of institutions don't use social logins or even block that information from or those uh, from their site. Uh, so uh, people have asked for a different way to do this. Um, and that's where this feature comes in. Basically, this is a large undertaking. Um, and since we're working with the, doing some of this on Sierra, um, I was talking with the Luna subcommittee um, for various voting, um, and we talked about doing an analysis feature this year, um, and that's designed to help us take a large desirable feature like this and break it into chunks that make it um, uh, such that we can actually take action on it and start to build it. This first phase is just the analysis piece um, to determine the best path forward uh, to improve integration. I mentioned safe searches. We could probably expand this to do other things as well. Um, so we'll take a look at what are the best integration opportunities we have there with other library services um, or safe searches or other features within Summit. What will we get as part of this feature, um, courtesy of Aluna uh, working with us? Um, and that is um, some outputs that will include the initial analysis and planning. Um, we'll reach out to you uh, to determine what your needs and priorities are. I know from some co from conversations that I've had that working through single sign-on issues and authentication um, is a challenge across multiple sy systems within your um, uh, environment. Uh, and so we want to learn about what you want, what are the challenges you have, and how can we best meet those. Um, and then at the end of the year, we'll have a, in Q4, we'll have a recommendation for the development of functionality, um, feasibility of it, um, and any sort of milestones or phases that we can determine at that time. Um, so at the end of the year, we should have a clear path forward, forward or understand what's preventing us from getting there. Um, timing of the delivery of this functionality will be determined based on the outputs of that analysis. So we'll follow up with you then uh, to let you know what we have planned uh, with this functionality moving forward. A few other things that I want to talk about um, that have been at the top of the idea exchange um, and that we'd like to see happen within some, uh, but uh, um, again, with uh, the current environment and what we have, we're trying to be cautious. The things that we're thinking about are CDI improvements. Those will continue. That's not um, under review. We continue to work on that. Lots of Primo customers are moving into the system. And we will continue to look at performance and functionality um, and um, how the indexing process works and improve on that. Um, we also are looking at the ability to separate books and ebooks when searching. Uh, this has been one of the number one items on the idea exchange for some time. I wanted to talk about this one in particular because I know um, reading that sentence, it sounds really simple. Um, however, the um, merge records and the possibility of duplication issues complicate this feature. Um, and when we've looked at implying this in the past, it actually increased the number of duplicates that we had uh, to the point to make it a little too much noise. So we're taking a look at possible solutions um, and we'll make a recommendation on that if at all possible. And again, the idea there is to have a physical items facet and a digital items facet, probably how that will come out. But again, this is a bit of a risk because it's taking a look at the index um, and we'll keep you posted on what the status is for that. Um, 
we know it's critical and it's important and it's something you want, um, and we are uh, working to get there. Collective match and merge alternatives is another thing that's been at the top of the um, idea exchange. Uh, basically, what that is is that right now with Summon, you can either merge with all the index your catalog records. The benefit of that is that that does associate your records with other records out there that may have full text or more metadata, uh, making the relevance on them better. Um, however, that also can sometimes mean that you have uh, um, undesired uh, information or uh, content showing up in places like um, facets uh, due to metadata um, on the records that you're merging with. Um, and so we're taking a look at a way uh, to um, be a little more selective about that matching word. And if nothing else, make sure that the problematic metadata doesn't display. So again, we're taking a look at how we might be able to do that um, in our current environment. And then other ones that have impact to display um, that we know are important and we'll see what we can do around. Um, that's around 5XX notes fields, topic explorer on smaller screens, and uh, the database recommender activation process. And we're going to be cautious with this, and we do want to do some work on this, but it will depend on how we can release that without much disruption. Finally, I want to highlight the idea exchange. Um, that is where some of the ideas that came from this NERS voting process came from. Um, I'll be updating the idea exchange in the next week. That will release any votes you have dedicated to things that have been planned for the roadmap. So you can reapply those to new features or other ones that um, are out there. So please take some time to go to the idea exchange. We will take the top idea exchange items to be candidates for the NERS voting cycle for 2021. Um, and of course, I look at the idea exchange monthly and pull things off of there as well. So anything that doesn't get scheduled by me will be part of that um, voting process um, for the NERS cycle for 2021. So right now is a great time to go out there, create some new items, or vote on the existing ones. The URL is right there on the Finally, I want to go over some uh, key COVID-19 related resources um, and some of the things that we went over to help you out with some of your remote access um, work that you're doing now. Uh, so first off, <clears throat> much of this and information to support all Exlevis products can be found on the Trust Center. Um, and of course, our statement regarding coronavirus is there as well. Um, if you're like me, you're probably getting 20 emails a day talking about different systems and and things both in your personal and your business or your working life um, uh, that are talking about coronavirus status. And don't worry about keeping track of it. If you get, get information from us, you can just go to this knowledge center and we'll all be captured there. Um, <clears throat> we also um, had a lot of questions around um, how you can direct patrons to search electronic materials by default. If you want to do that, you can modify your search box to search for uh, full text by default. Um, just go to the widget builder, which you find in the hamburger menu, which is the three lines in the upper right hand corner of your um, search screen. Um, and you'll find the widget builder link there. You follow the steps there. And when you get to the search page, just select full text only under refine your search in the facets pane. Uh, you use the code generated by that process um, and that will uh, and replace any search box you have with that. That will make it so that the results by default will point people to online resources. They can still cl clear that facet if they'd like to, to get to other materials if they want, but it's just a way to direct them to electronic resources first, if you think that will be of help. We have a bunch more additional tips and uh, best practices out there. Um, we use tips to talk about access, talk about communication and engagement and integration. Um, we'll send you this PowerPoint, so you'll have some, and we'll make this PDF available, so you'll have these links available if you'd like them. Um, Chat and summon, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Remember, you can use it even if you're not um, on WhatsApp. There are other apps that we uh, support. Just go under the admin console. You'll find it under um, chat and right here under settings. Custom panels is another great way to communicate information. I visit various library sites all the time, and I've been really impressed with the information you've got there around, uh, around COVID-19 and how you're supporting your patrons remotely. Um, if you haven't done this yet, it's a really simple thing to do. Go under pages, custom panel sections. Um, you'll find it there. Be sure to check the persistent uh, button right there. Oh, excuse me. Be sure to check the persistent button, the checkbox right underneath the uh, um, editing section uh, to make sure that that shows up for every search if you wanted to do that. And you can also at the bottom, uh, the, the list of um, uh, various uh, 
custom panels that you have there. That is the order they'll show in. So anything you want to be uh, at the top, just drag it to the top. Something to note on custom panels is that right now it is not supported by default on mobile. Um, we do have, um, with more and more individuals accessing materials remotely, they're probably using mobile devices or tablets more frequently. A way to resolve this is just go um, into the Knowledge Center article titled, What Kind of Things Can a Library Put in Some in Custom Panels? Um, and there are some instructions in code uh, that you can copy and paste into a custom panel. Um, the custom panel will basically be invis invisible, um, but it will make it so that uh, um, panels show up on mobile summon sites. Uh, and we will work to put that into the main product, uh, but for now, this is a quick and easy workaround that can solve that issue. Finally, I want to touch on database recommender and best bets. Um, these are great ways to highlight content or to get other information uh, out there for folks. Um, so uh, if you'd like, you can go uh, and add tags to these. They are tag based, so they'll only appear when those words are searched. Uh, so you can go in and review those, activate resources, edit them, or remove tags if you need to, all within the recommender section of the console. And that brings me to the end of my remarks. I will now pass over to Amy. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Glad you could join us to hear about all the work we've completed for Q2 for the 360 and Intota services. And the Q2 release is actually going to be split into two different release dates. Um, most importantly, though, I hope you're all doing well and taking care of yourselves. And I know that you're facing some uncertainties in the upcoming months. So I just want to take a second to thank you for being our customers. So as you know, we, uh, we have quarterly releases for the 360 and Intota services, and they're usually timed to match the summon release dates. So why exactly are we splitting up the Q2 release? We heard loud and clear that while you're adjusting to remote offices and your users are working offsite, um, you want as little upheaval as possible right now. Two of our major projects for Q2 include big, improvement packages to index enhanced direct linking and also to the 360 mark updates and data on demand infrastructure. And since at least in the Northern hemisphere, mid-May coincides with the end of the term, uh, particularly with the linking refinements, we want to avoid any possible disruption while folks are unable to physically get to the library. But in some pretty exciting news, the reason we're sticking with the original May 13th date for part of the release is that the customer support organization is rolling out a live chat option. So this will offer you a new direct channel of communication from within the 360 Client Center and Intota applications. And please note that neither of these releases on May 13th or June 10th will incur any downtime for you. So let's take a look at some of the details that you're going to see next week. Uh, the support team is rolling out a chat service in uh, beginning May 13th. You'll be able to chat in real time with one of our North American team members from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the link is accessed from within Client Center in Intota. And at this time, the support team will be able to address Summon, 360, and Intota services questions via that live chat link. Um, CDI content or 360 KB and Ulrich's questions will still need to be handled via the Salesforce cases that you logged today. So let's repeat that. The chat link will be open for summon 360 and in total services questions. Um, we continue to roll out counter R5 advancements and now you'll see manual and sushi options for the database and platform reports. That's DR and PR in uh, counter R5 speak. And folks that have been uploading TR reports or title reports since the last release, thank you so much. Um, you reported some issues to us and we were able to get those fixed and those will be um, distributed next week as well. Summon clients will now be able to access Summon usage statistics from Client Center rather than from the Summon admin console. And lastly, there are a number of fixes to Client Center and Intota applications that will be released, and full details of those will be coming out within the next week. So what is the experience going to be like for the live support chat link? This is when you select the Contact Us link, that is in Client Center and in TOTA today. 
um, you will see this new landing page. One option available here is what you have today, opening a case in the support portal. And the other option that may be available from 9 to 5 Pacific time again is the live chat uh, button that is, will be in the bottom right hand corner. Um, if no one is, oops, sorry, if no one is available or if it's outside of those hours, um, you'll see what's displayed here, which is um, Asian offline. But again, um, the option exists here to log a case with the support portal as you do today. So we have a major improvements in our counter R5 support. And we have a new sushi harvester. This is separate from the sushi R4 harvester and it's built to the new standard specifications. Uh, it's able to harvest TR, DR, and PR reports in May for R5 compliant providers. And um, a mea culpa here in Q1, I didn't ensure that the DRS forms were set up in advance of the release, uh, but we will have sushi options available for DRS forms on May 13th. Manual upload will also be available for DR and PR reports. And I know that your most important question is when can you get the data in the in, in TOTA assessment reports? And we're on target for a Q re, Q3 release that with those. Um, there's been an awful long runway for an, employing this new standard and we're trying to be very careful and deliberate in how we build and deploy it. Um, so I'm grateful for your patience in seeing those, being able to see those reports in, in TOTA assessment. So to take a look at Sushi setup, here's an example from Client Center. It's essentially the same as it was for R4. Um, we are going to provide that DRS template for you to add your library credentials to and then select the reports that are harvested. Um, in this case, it's a bio one provider. Um, we, we've seeded the template with the URL and then you will need to add your requester ID and customer ID. Um, those credentials will vary by provider, but from what we've seen, requester and ID and customer ID are the most common. Um, and then at the bottom, you can select the reports that you want to be harvested. Harvesting will happen monthly as it does now for the R4 reports. And I want to emphasize that support for R4 is not going away. So Sushi for R4 and R5 will work in parallel. Um, here's a snapshot of a client center harvest for Bio1. And the harvester was able to get the J2, J4, and J3 uh, reports from Bio1. And here is the data that was processed from that file. Um, as it displays in Client Center, when you click on the data link from the previous page, um, this is one title that came through in the in the Sushi Harvest, and you can see on the right the types of new metrics that uh, are being used by for Counter R5, like total item investigations and unique item investigations. So this is just to show that the data is being harvested, verified. Um, it's, it's being processed by our applications and stored um, for the point in time at which it will be available in the Intota assessment. Um, here's an example from the Intota application. In this case, it's a platform master report from OSA Publishing. And uh, this is the total stats for the year 2019 um, for that platform report. Uh, report which includes things like searches on the platform and total item investigations and unique item investigations. Again, the report, the data is there. Um, we're able to ingest it, whether that's done manually or um, via Sushi Harvest, and we are incorporating it, storing it, and getting ready to process with things like cost and um, addition and nor doing normalization and aggregation in order to get all of that good information and that enriched information into Intota assessment. Um, so I know that the counter R5 can be a little confusing and I just wanna be extra clear on what will be available next week for getting counter R5 data into your system. Um, the Sushi uh, Harvester will be able to go out and get 
on a monthly basis the TRDR and PR reports. Um, and you can likewise upload any of those manually if you wish. For those folks who participate in our DRS program, um, the semi-annual collection that will begin in July of this year will include us collecting the annual TR, DR, and PR reports for all of 2019. So the, that annual um, collection that for 2019. And it will also include the TR, DR, and PR reports for January through June of 2020. So the first half of 2020. Um, so this would be a retrospective collection of the counter R5 compliant reports that we have not been able to support up until this point. Um, so no, no data has been lost since folks, since providers uh, started rolling out R5 support, we'll be able to go ahead and grab that in conjunction with R4 reports because both of those standards are employed right now. Um, one of the other features that you're going to see beginning next week is the ability to uh, access some usage statistics from Client Center. There's a new permission available under the 360 core permissions branch here, and it's called Summon Usage Statistics. Um, the valid values are none, view, and view edit. And when I turn that on for an operator or a staff user, um, under the Business Intelligence Tools section of Client Center, you will see a link called Summon Usage, usage Statistics. And clicking that will link you directly to the Summon Usage OBI platform. So you don't have to go through the Summon Administration Console in order to um, get to Usage Statistics. Um, for the June 10th release, so several weeks later, as I mentioned, we are going to have a big package of 360 link um, lookup uh, and refinements. Um, this will improve accuracy in linking to many providers. Um, we worked with between 20 and 30 providers, including some big ones like ProQuest and ScienceDirect and Taylor and Francis to ensure that we're We've got the correct um, linking logic in order to get to um, those articles from 360 link. We also invested a lot of time in the data on demand and 360 mark updates infrastructure. Um, that infrastructure <clears throat> will include fixes like fully encoded direct links and customization resolutions and a video type that's now, um, a video type will now show in the DOD report. Um, last but not least, um, <clears throat> we have a new article level link parameter um, for inclusion for um, ProQuest, Gale, and EBSCO host um, databases. This was the need was surfaced by um, libraries that use the Open Athens redirector proxy, but as we um, dove into it, we've figured out that making these changes, um, specifying these parameters, which include things like account ID and customer ID, actually benefit all 360 link users. Um, and it affects both, or impacts rather, both open URL and IEDL links. <clears throat> so again, this is something that we develop, developed at the request of folks who use Open Athens Redirector, but it's an improvement in article level linking to those providers um, for everyone. And the details of adding those particular parameters into the database details page will be documented in the Knowledge Center. So as a mid-year checkpoint here, on the left, we've got the features that um, we have agreed to deliver for the Q2 release. Um, we were able to put all of those together despite um, kind of recent <clears throat> recent events. Um, and looking forward to the second half of 2020, um, we know that we have to, and as I said, we will be delivering in total assessment reports using all that good data that we are now able to harvest and collect. Um, at the request of many, many, many libraries, um, we are going to be adding the last updated timestamp for databases in 360 Core and Client Center and in TOTA. 
um, you, so you will be able to see at a glance when um, there was a last full or partial update to a database. Um, the third bullet point here is possibly the most interesting. Um, I think we are kind of stepping back and surveying our current work environments and the changing needs of our libraries and um, how how we may need to reprioritize enhancements that um, we have. Um, so if you have suggestions, please do talk to support about them. Uh, if you would like to raise a priority on something, please talk to support about that. You can also email me directly um, with the address that will be displaying at the end here. Um, I'd be happy to um, hear your input about um, how things are changing for you and how we can help make your lives easier. Um, similar to what Brent was saying about summon and accessibility, uh, we do have the PAT results for Client Center and Link, and we'll be taking a look at um, those results and addressing as best as possible um, in particularly Client Center and Link um, those the issues that we can. Um, one thing that has been on the board for a long time is limiting the EJP auto suggestions to what a what is in a profile, um, as opposed to the whole universe of suggestions. Um, so we will keep that on the board for now, um, but it will it remains to see how um, some of your uh, changing priorities will affect that. Um, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you everyone for taking time out of your day, um, wherever you're accessing uh, the webinar from. Uh, these are challenging times. There's so much um, going on uh, in the world around us. Hopefully we can make your lives a little bit easier, a little simpler. Uh, please let us know how we can. We really do appreciate uh, your use of our products, uh, your participation. Amy? Um, we appreciate how hard you're working to serve your users and your communities. Um, and I wanna thank you for on our services to try to help you do that. Um, take care everyone and thanks for participating today.